All right, hello everyone. If I can be heard, I guess I can be heard. I hope. Um, so today, I am running white to challenge mode. It is um, pretty much harder version of Pokemon White Two, kind of. There's some bugs with that, so that'll be talked about in a little bit. Um, so, is this like a thing where I like count you off to start? Feel free to start. Okay, I am ready in three, two, one, go. Um, so this is Pokemon White 2, um, challenge mode. Hopefully I set the, I'm 90% sure I put the setting right. Um, so pretty much what's happening here is um, normal mode is usually how people play this game. It is, um, I'd say a pretty, it, it's a fun game without challenge mode, but challenge mode kind of raises everyone's, the opponent's levels a lot. It, it technically raises their levels a lot, but what actually happens is the stats actually end up staying the same, unfortunately. So, like, if um, the, let's say, Charon's Lillipup is level 14 in challenge mode, the stats are going to be of level 12. I think that's Charon's Lillipup's level in the beginning. Um, and that is... It's kind of a buff and a nerf in a way uh, the only st like stats that are actually changed are for gym leaders who get 30 ivs each and uh, usually an extra pokemon which is kind of um it adds to the challenge obviously so we're gonna start we chose the female character, it doesn't actually matter which one we choose. There's kind of no difference here. And if this was normal mode, uh, we would be fine with taking any type of Tepig. But because of the... Uh, because it's challenge mode, we're gonna have to take a different... Uh, we're gonna have to save and reset for a decent enough Tepig. So we're going to go ahead and get our starter. And so this category is called Baton Pass. Um, it's kind of like... Um, the idea is that you are going to use a different Pokemon for each gym leader um, and gets this in this game.
So we're going to save here. And the threshold for Tepig is, it's okay. It's just that the fight can be really hard sometimes. We don't need to give it the nickname. We're not going to use it that much. Yeah, it looks about good. So we're gonna have our first rival fight here, and unlike every other Pokemon game where it's um, you fight against a level five with your level five, uh, the rival is gonna be buffed a little. Even though the stats are still exactly the same, so it ends up being the exact same fight. And unlike regular, uh, oh, so the experience we do get does reflect with the level. So in normal mode, we'd still be level six here, but we do get level seven here for um, challenge mode. We'll finally get running shoes. We're going to talk to this person by directly interacting with them so they don't have to call us over.
So we're going to talk to the former champion Alder here. And we're going to have to go do stuff with him. So we're going to have to go past here to deliver the town map to our rival. So if you couldn't tell, it is, um, so the date and time, it's, um, during the autumn, which helps us, uh, save a couple seconds for, um, for just moving around and movement in the overworld. And there's also an item that is specific to only, um, autumn and winter. And we're gonna need to grab that, so we're gonna. Uh, so we chose Autumn. So, right here, we're gonna catch this little pup. It's gonna be used for the first gym. And we're kinda hoping that it doesn't have, like, terrible stats, because otherwise, we're gonna lose against Charon a lot. In normal mode, we would be fine with taking, like, any, um, normal type. But unfortunately, in challenge mode, it's kind of difficult to use every normal type. So Lillipup's usually the best option here, instead of, like, Patrat or Azuru. Unfortunately, our little pup here isn't strong enough to take down the rival, so we're gonna have to get some help with Tepig. And since experience is tied to your Pokemon's level and the opponent's Pokemon's level, we can gain a lot of experience really quickly. If we're lower level than the opponent, we get a lot more than we would if we were higher level. So now we ha what we have to do is look for this Herdier that the owner of the farm lost. We're kind of hoping for no encounters here, but we're just going to have to deal with it.
So we are going to avoid that spinner here to grab the X attack because white 2 does not have, like, has no X items before the seventh gym, which can cause a lot of trouble. So we can't really set up and one hit KO everything. We're going to have to chisel away at every Pokemon. We're going to grab this potion for a little more safety again. So we get the TM for Frustration here, which is what we're going to be using for Lillipup. It's it's an attack based on the friendship you have with your Pokemon, and so since we just caught Lillipup, it's going to be pretty powerful. More powerful than Tackle. We're going to talk to this breeder here so we can just get um, a free heal, since we're kind of short on items in general. So there we only had to take one, um, we only had to jump past what, like one cliff, or ledge, whatever you want to call it, because in the autumn the leaves kind of cover up like a ditch there is there. Um, I forgot to teach Frustration, but it's fine for these battles. It's not too difficult. And worst case, we can obviously switch to Tepig, so... We're gonna try to give as much experience to Tepig as we can. Because we are gonna use it for a later gym. We get another free heal here. And we are going to get introduced to the... I think it's the Metal Rally in English? No, Metal Box, okay. 
Oh, wait, no, it is called Metal Rally. Um, so it's kind of a side quest in this game that we aren't going to really do. Unfortunately, this guy's going to be like right next to the PC in the poke center. It's kind of annoying sometimes. If you talk to him, it's kind of like a bunch of time loss. So, uh, Alder told us to go back to the first city, so we are going to back to going back there to face off against the gym leader. And we're going to get these orange berries, and they're going to be really important for these fights early on, especially. Man, okay. So there's a guy here, gives us X Defend, which we're going to use for Charon. Gonna teach frustration before I forget again. Nice crit. We should have hit level 12 here if um, we didn't have to use Tepic for that pants age we fought earlier. Helping hand. I don't think we're going to hit level 13 here, which is fine. It's just that Sharon will be a little tougher. We're also going to save here because this fight's probably the second or third hardest fight in the game. So gym leaders are pretty much the only things that are like technically buffed in challenge mode. 
since uh, the programming error of um, the level still being considered the same as in normal mode, in a way. The stats are the same as the normal mode, but with different natures. So what we really want to hope for is uh, this patch rat not attacking us. Because if we go into the Lillipo fight with like any damage taken, it really gets dicey. Hold on, what was my attack step? 24? The worst part about this fight is that um, since Charon uses a lot of workup, we can. It kind of snowballs if he ha uses a lot of workups and then tackles us. Um, we did get saved by our ability pickup, which in normal mode, um, Charon's Lillipup does have pickup, and that's why you usually wouldn't e equip an Orin Berry there. But in challenge mode, we do, because it is very necessary at this point. Um, and this pit of is only in challenge mode. You wouldn't see it in normal mode. All right, good fight. So Charon is down. Honestly, if you beat Patra without taking damage, it's pretty free. Unless the little pup sets up to like plus three, or if we're plus defense or, I mean, minus defense or minus attack. And we get the TM4 workup, which is going to be important for a couple Pokemon, because it's the only way we can raise our attack stats. Because we don't have access to X items. So next up, we're going to head to Burbank City. So we do get the C gear here. We're just going to not turn it on at all because it kind of does make the game lag a little bit. And it would change RNG, but we're not manipulating anything, so it doesn't really matter for us. So we are gonna box Lillipup here. It We will get it eventually, again. We're going to buy a couple healing items for the next gym, which I would say is the hardest gym fight.
And we're also going to buy a couple of repels so we don't have to deal with encounters for these next few routes because we are not going to catch anything from here. I think this dialogue is pretty funny because if you keep press mashing A, you're going to keep looping the conversation. Just probably the game developer is hoping you'd be caught lacking, I guess. So this hiker didn't let us through, wouldn't have let us through earlier in the game because we don't have the first gym badge. But now we're gonna fight him. Ender's pretty annoying because, you know, just can't kill it. Can't kill the wheel because it endures. Some more dialogue. And here we're gonna get a first encounter with um, spinners, pretty much trainers that can look in different directions, so they're kind of harder to avoid. I'm so good. Um, okay, so that wasn't, I wouldn't say, a really safe way to avoid him. But we avoided him, so the... Um, yeah, pretty much good either way. We get great balls here. And we also get to avoid that earlier double battle because we boxed Lillipup. Some more dialogue. We're gonna grab this X accuracy for safety. And I'm also gonna save because Tepig's a little little low leveled right now and catching this these Pokemon are kind of risky. The Pokemon we're looking for is um, Magnemite. Which is going to be used for this next gym. It just matches up the best. And even then it's really difficult for Magnemite. We're also going to look for a Pit of if we can find one. Magnemite. Level 10. That is the lowest level we could have gotten, but that's fine. Nice. We're also going to catch Pit of here anyways, even though in other routes you usually want to catch like a Zubat 
in the sewer, Castellia sewers later on. It's just, we need Pitta to help out a little bit with... Uh, with the next gym leader. If this has magnet pool, okay, well... Um... This is gonna suck. We're just gonna have to, to defeat this thing for some extra experience, which I'm not against. It is, it is a 35% encounter, so I don't know what's going on. There it is. This is going to be our flyer for the run. We are going to go back to the Pogue Center to heal, and also get Lillipup out of the box. I would consider this probably the hardest gym in the entire game. And you'll be able to tell why in a little bit. Also, the music is great. Since Steel is immune to poison, it can't really hit us with stab moves, it's just a lot of the damage can add up and really hurt. And Sonic Boom is probably the most important move that we're going to learn here. So Sonic, uh, Sonic Boom, I think I said Sonic Wave earlier, um, is a consistent damage dealer, so it does like 30 HP consistently. And since our, um, 
since our Pokemon are like lower level, and for Roxy specifically, we have like significantly worse stats. Thunder Shock isn't really going to do much against the opponent. So the best uh, consistent way to beat Roxy is to use Sonic Boom. Which, um, it's 90 accuracy, so if you've played any Pokemon game and used... Um, it's not as bad as Stone Edge, but I consider it to be as bad if you have bad luck. So we're going to save here too. We're pretty much going to save before every gym leader and um, Elite Four member. Because we can't really use revives yet because we don't have any. So in normal mode, Roxy only has two Pokemon, but in challenge mode, obviously has three. I think they were level 15 in normal mode. And yeah, we're kind of hoping that coughing doesn't activate our Orin Berry. But it did. And depending on our special defense, we're going to have to switch out against this next Pokemon. Um, this Grimer, uh, specifically to counter uh, Magnemite, has um, Mudslap, like seen there. And it doesn't do that much, but it is extremely annoying because it lowers accuracy. And if you think uh, Pitov's going to survive um, a single Venom Shock, uh, which I guess it did, which it usually doesn't. It's crazy. So thankfully, uh, one more Sonic Boom. Uh, three Sonic Booms kills it perfectly without putting it in heal range. Uh, since we have lower accuracy, we might have to switch out later. Especially if it's using Rollout. And the Sonic Boom is going to kill if we hit it. And, okay, well... I did say this is the hardest fight in the game. But I just, it did look really easy. Um, I, I've, I have had times where I've spent 20 minutes trying to beat Roxy. Because of Sonic Boom misses. But yeah, it went pretty well this time. We got a useless TM again. And we have an extra side quest we have to go on to. Pokestar Studios. It is pretty much just um like a like a movie. Yeah, where they um record movies. Starring Pokemon. It's kind of like a three minute detour, I think. Actually, no, it probably, it's, it's longer. It's like six or seven minutes, I think. Since we also have to watch a movie.
So that's the uh, uh, Roxy's, I think, father. Um, and we kind of want him to come back and actually um, kind of do his job, even though he does want to be a movie star. We still do have to mash for the text here, because otherwise it's going to be slow. And yeah, there's the former 7th gym leader Bryson, just being an actor. There are a couple parts about um, these interactions that I don't quite understand. Specifically, like, um, will it be outspeeding the real... Pop Roxy. So we are going to be forced to act in our own movie here too. Which, um... We want to go as fast as possible so we're going to purposefully um, not win the fight and make it even worse movie. The interaction I don't quite understand is, um... If we do choose, um, Force Bomb here, and then go to the next session where it's Bullaby, against Bullaby, like in the movie we saw earlier, um, we do outspeed if we use Ice Punch. Which, honestly, I don't get why. I think it's hard-coded to make sure that you're faster when you use Ice Punch. Also this um, report here is kind of a lie. If I reset the game it wouldn't reload to here, it just, re uh, it just saves the fact that I did a movie. We're gonna use the box here and move our Pokemon around. Uh, specifically boxing everything except for Magnemite.
So the specific date we chose in game is to make sure that it doesn't rain on this uh, in this city or the route earlier. So route uh, twenty, I think. It's specifically bad for like Tepig, obviously because it's raining and fire moves are weakened. Also, there's an animation for every time the rain is still up. We also get another HM that we're not going to use. So we're going to chase after Team Plasma again. And go back to um, I think Route 20. So yeah, we boxed every Pokemon to avoid the double battle again. Because if we only have one Pokemon in our party, we don't have to fight um, the Twins. We're going to spam Thundershock against this Plasma member again. That isn't the worst spinner you can hit, just because, um, well, if, you, if you've if you passed the preschooler every time up until this last time we passed her, it kind of would have sucked. So we do get the Pokemon again. We don't get Pit of because we don't need the Flyer quite yet. And we're gonna get Tepig because uh, it's gonna be used for the next gym. So we're finally going to head to Castilia City, and we're also going to get the bike, which is going to um, quicken our movement by a lot more. That ship is going to be important later.
We are going to enter this building to get the EXP share. Which you can get for free by just entering the building, which is a lot more convenient than the original black and white. Where you have to beat this guy to get the experience share. We're gonna say Tepig here, because we actually do have a Tepig, and also the Charcoal boosts fire type attacks, and it also sells for- it's the most expensive, so if we sell it we can get a lot of money back. And we're gonna enter here to talk to this clown. If we talk to all the clowns in Castelia City, we do get a rare candy, which is gonna be used for a later Pokemon. A new section of Castelia City that was added into this game that wasn't in black and white is the sewers. And here is the second reason why we chose to um, Choose this specific date, which guarantees um, autumn. Wait, what the? Am I low? I'm too low of a level to even use repels at this point. Um. So yeah, we have in the winter and autumn. There isn't any water in the sewers. So we can go down in that area that we just did, like go down the stairs. During the summer and spring, um, well, during the summer and spring there is water, and in the winter and fall there isn't. And since we can go down those stairs and like move, have a lot more mobility without the rain, we can grab um, an item that we're going to have to use for a little bit later. Thankfully, this duo here is really strong, so it's just going to want to KO everything here. Finally get to see Bird, which is one of the harder gym leaders. And we actually get an H gym that we're gonna have to teach. And we get introduced to Colrus, which is going to be and she's an interesting character. I wouldn't say the best, though. So here we grab the Expedef, which we can only grab now. So we put Tepig into this first slot here, because we're going to use it next. 
and we're gonna use an escape rope to get out quicker. And this Tepig is severely underleveled, but because of the experience mechanics in Gen 5, which this game's a part of, um, we're gonna gain about like three levels each time we beat one of these Pokemon. We are going to get level 13 here, and we're going to have to teach a move. Um, defense Curl is pretty much needed because, unlike in uh, normal mode, Tepic's going to have to struggle against the first Pokemon. Um, that uh, Berg uses. And at level 15, we're going to learn Flame Charge. Uh, we are going to evolve here into Pig Knight. And since we get level 18, we're not going to have to decline teaching a move to Tepig after it evolves. I don't know what the developers were on when they were making this Pokemon, honestly. I guess it is kind of like Kirby, though. We are going to teach work up here. It is going to help us set up. And we didn't teach it earlier because Tepig doesn't learn it, but Big Knight does. If we did evolve at level 17, we would, have, we would have had to decline teaching Arm Thrust. Which isn't really important for us. We, we are going to set up to plus one here. Just so we can Oko and struggle a little less with these later Pokemon. Specifically Dwebble, which is part rock type.
If he had bad special attack, that wouldn't be doing that much. Um, usually we would avoid this trainer, but since we are kind of in need of extra levels, and we're still level 19, it is kind of harder to beat Berg if we don't set up, or, well, not set up, but get to this high enough level. Um, so in the damage calculator for Pokemon, uh, your level does play obviously play an effect, and you get you get a lot more powerful when you get to level. Um, uh, what's the word? Um, any multiple of five, so level twenty is significantly more powerful than level nineteen because of the damage calculation, and also level like. If it ends with a 3 or an 8, it's also a slight buff, but a little bit less than the 5. Like, every 5. So, we really wanted to hit 20 there, and we did, so that's good. We are going to heal, heal and save here. I would say this is like the third or fourth hardest gym. And it's harder, th these earlier gyms are harder in challenge mode because the gym leader Pokemon are like all level, all obviously higher levels, but they also have perfect individual values. So pretty much they are, um, they're like naturally gifted in a way. And so in challenge mode, Berg leads with Dwebble, which is a significantly harder matchup than um, Swadloon. Uh, yeah, as you can see, it does a lot of damage. That's why we defense Curl. The thing is, if we were... If we were... Um, probably pure fighting type, this Dwebble wouldn't use, um, Rock Blast, it'd use Fain Attack, because if I remember correctly, the damage calculation will only take an account, if it's a multi-hit move, it'll only take in account the first hit, so like one hit of Rock Blast. Hopefully, okay. Yeah, hopefully we kind of get it hit into Blaze here. Okay, well, getting crit is not the right choice. Um, so, in the calculation, since Faint Attack is Dark type and resisted, it only does, I think, 30 damage compared to Rock Blast, which would do, I think, 25 each individual hit, and then plus the same type, of, same type attack bonus, which would make it 25 times 1.5, and that should be around 37. So it's a little stronger than Faint Attack, so it always goes for Rock Blast, and it hurts a lot more, because it can hit 2 to 5 times instead of just uh, ones like Fain Attack. Oh. This game can be brutal, honestly. Why do I have to get double crit? And then five hits immediately after. So, if I were running a different Pokemon like Herdier, I'd always go for Fain Attack instead. I'm just gonna risk it at this point. Uh, 
Okay, well, I, I did get lucky. I am in Blaze right now, so I do get a 1.5 times boost. Hopefully this kills. It should kill, yeah. Thankfully, after Dwebble, nothing's a problem. I sure hope I hit this um, range, it should die. Okay, yeah, good. So yeah, Berg is good. Setting up on Dwebble is kind of the hardest part because it's, it's a multi-hit move. Getting crit is a lot more common. Another useless HM, let's go. TN, actually. So we're gonna finish this clown side quest and talk to the one in this building, in the metal rally building actually. The one I talked about earlier. So up here we're going to have to talk to Colrus again. So before we go all the way to the, um, all the way north, we're gonna buy a couple lemonades. Uh, this is, lemonades heal a little bit more than super potions. And we're gonna need that extra, uh, healing for the next gym. And possibly the gym after that. That should be, um, one more. So now we're going to get the dowsing machine, I think, from Bianca. So this clown gives us the uh, rare candy. I don't think that guy was a trainer if I remember correctly, but I'm not going to risk it. Here we're going to heal Pig Knight. Teach Return. Which probably could get skipped, but I'm not quite sure. And we're going to give Lil- oh, no. Not Magnemite. We're gonna give Lillipup the EXP share. And we're gonna make sure that it evolves at level 16. So when it evolves into Herdier, it actually learns the, all the other HMs that we need. So we don't have to catch like a Psyduck from the ranch way back when we called the Lillipup. Pup. 
So this Magnemite has Sturdy, so we're gonna have to break it with a non-super effective move, or any move actually. It's always gonna go for Paralysis here, which is annoying, but it's still fine. We should hit level 15 for Lillipuck here. And since this Clink doesn't have any paralyzing moves, unlike Magnemite, we're just gonna heal. I guess we didn't hit level 16, so we're gonna have to adapt for that. Also, the Little Pup learns Dig, which can be used in exchange for it's going to be used instead of escape ropes to save a little bit of money, since we already have to pick up the Dig TM. Which is right here. And specifically in challenge mode, we are going to go to this house back here. To get specific items. We get citrus berries, which are which are gonna be important for a later fight. Which again is buff for challenge mode. Oh my gosh. Um, well, this is gonna give us that extra experience that we needed. I think it's, yeah, Lie of Herd. It will get us that, um... Herdier. I think we're gonna be faster. If not, it's fine. Okay, well, if we resist it, that's fine too. So I guess Lola Pope was really close to evolving because it just got level 17. So we are going to the Desert Resort, which is an optional area, and we're going to try to catch a Sandshrew. And also grab a couple items. Hopefully not encountering Sigilyph or Trap Inch. Sigilyph is kind of fast, so we can't really run from it consistently, and Trap Inch usually has um, Arena Trap as a ability, which makes it so that we can't run. This guy gives us the Soft Sand, which is going to buff our Ground-type moves, which is going to be important. This is going to be the Rock Tomb TM, and it's going to be needed to hit um, the Electric Flying types in the Electric Gym.
Nice. Uh, we choose Sandshrew over something like Sandile because uh, Sandile is extremely um, frail. It's going to die in like one hit. And especially with the experience, uh, experience difference, actually the level difference, and the ID difference, it's going to be really difficult. And we don't evolve to Proc Rock until like level 29. And even then, you're probably not going to take any of the hits. Uh, Sandshrew has way better defense, and it's going to evolve before. Wait, hold on. Um, no. Uh, Soft Sand. I'm maybe imagining the newer games too much, because we can't teach a TM through the status... Checking the Pokemon's status. Fury Cutter isn't needed. We're gonna teach Dig to Hurtier. It's pretty much gonna be the utility Pokemon for this run. Rock Tomb over Fury Swipes. And then Strength to Herdier. We're gonna repel for the way back. Take these two items, and then we're gonna dig out. The sand there um, is annoying because you have to get off the bike. Well, you don't have to get off the bike to walk in it, but it's just that the bike... And we are here at the Join Avenue. Um, it's kind of like a mall, pretty much where you kind of recruit people to do shops or show them around to get, like, raised levels in the shop. It's a fun side quest, but um, obviously it's a speed run, so we're not going to do anything with it. So yeah, we kind of take, take over for the guy that just left. Yeah, it's, it's empty right now, but it usually isn't. So this man's gonna give us red shards. And we're gonna use all ten of them for two Pokemon. And true. Um, I think we can box. Hold on, actually, no. Yeah, that's good enough. Okay. Um, and we're gonna go shopping here. Gonna sell the charcoal for four thousand nine hundred um, dollars. Now, no paralyzed heals because we're not gonna get paralyzed. One 
super repel. So we are going to go to the old gym in the city, which is pretty much just uh, getting on roller coasters. It, it, it looks pretty fun. We're going to have to fight two trainers in here, which isn't too bad. We are going to use Dig on this first trainer, because our other ground move, Magnitude, is kind of inconsistent. It can pull from, I think, a bunch of numbers from, I think it's 1 to 10. And I think 7 is the most common. And then it kind of like, it's like a normal curve for the other one. So 10 is rare and 1 is rare. The rare they're both the rarest, if I remember correctly. And then it doesn't make contact either. So it's great for Pokemon with the ability static. So we don't have to get paralyzed. Uh, Dig is a contact move, so it does get pretty annoying there. So the consistent um, ground type move makes you paralyzed. So uh, Flaffy is a Pokemon that does have static, so we're going to go for magnitudes. Hope we get high numbers. Uh, well, I guess critical hits also can solve the issue. the best gym theme in the entire series. Has to be this one. So Sandshrew is going to evolve at level 22. And we're gonna into Sand Slash, and it's gonna be a significant stat buff. Again, Elekid is well. Elekid has static, and it's gonna paralyze if we um, make contact. So we're just gonna spam Magnitude for this fight. Four. So we're going to evolve here. I'm not quite sure if we're going to have to skip teaching uh, Crush Claw.
Okay, well, we don't need to learn sand team anyways, so. I guess either way, we don't have to teach it. We're gonna have to skip teaching a move. Another case of fighting Flaffy. So we're gonna spam Magnitude again. Um, so for- I'm gonna start explaining the Elisa fight. Um, Elisa gets an extra Pokemon, like every other gym leader, and it's gonna be a Joltik. And that Joltik has the move Energy Ball. And it pretty much kills, um, Sand Slash from full. So we're gonna try to prevent it from coming in. At all. Actually, not coming in at all, but we're gonna make sure that we can take a single energy ball and then we can outspeed it and uh, defeat it. So, we're gonna wanna make sure we have Pig Knight at full HP, which will help us set up the like required um, X items. Gonna heal Sand Slash here. We're gonna have Pig Knight take um, an Energy Ball, and then it should die to a Volt Switch, which will force um, a different Pokemon to come out, so we don't have to set up on Joltik. Um, in normal mode, this Emolga doesn't have Aerial Ace, but it does in Challenge mode, so it's significantly, it hits significantly harder than it would have earlier. I think I can take another one. That was probably the wrong move to do. It's gonna go for a quick attack here because we're in kill range. Yep. Um, I'm gonna have a Swift again. Uh, yeah, we're gonna die here if we don't heal. So yeah, it's... And obviously, like, the 30 IVs is significantly... Is making Emolga significantly stronger. So here's the problem, Joltik. It's gonna go for Energy Ball. And we have to avoid it. So we're gonna go to Pig Knight. And since the only reason why, uh, since, uh, Joltik's most, the highest damaging move it has is... The highest damaging move it has is, um, Bolt Switch, usually. Uh, since... So it, it, it would have used Bolt Switch on Sand Slash if it wasn't Ground-type. And if you're not a ground type, it's always guaranteed to go for a bolt switch. Same with this Flappy here. So we're going to start setting up on this. Um, let me check the stats here. Good attack. Yep, okay. Uh, we're going to Expedef here to take an energy ball. 
then we're also going to use an X accuracy because um, 80 beast accuracy on uh, what's the move? Oh my gosh. 80 beast accuracy on Rock Tomb really sucks. Kind of just ruins your chances of doing anything. If you miss, you kind of lose, guaranteed. Okay, please break out of confusion. Uh, we're gonna teach Slash over Swift for consistent damage dealing. Pig Knight gets some experience too, doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're gonna use Rock Tomb. We're gonna take one energy ball at least. And then we're gonna use Dig here, which should be a guaranteed kill. And nice. So now all we have is Zip Striker left. And uh, we're just gonna hope it doesn't crit us with Stomp. Or flinch us, I was gonna say that. The fight's pretty much free from here. 1 AKO from Magnitude 9 is great. So we beat Elisa here. I think we should be fine on healing um, Sand Slash for now. Some extra Team Plasma members here. We have a pretty fast Sand Slash, it's usually not faster than Trubbish. Watchdog. Watchdog is annoying, but I guess Magnitude 8 can just sweep through it, so... It just kind of disappear. Some sad backstory for the rival. Get a free heal, though. Uh, we are going to get HMO2 Fly, 
which is going to be important, obviously. Hidden Grottos can have Pokemon. This Minchino is obviously guaranteed. Well, not obviously, but it is guaranteed. And if you're in the Hidden Grotto, the Pokemon usually has this hidden ability. Um, so here we have Charles, uh, which um, is a triple battle which doesn't exist anymore since like Gen 6. Uh, in Black 2, it'd be a rotation battle. And I will be the first one to tell you, it is absolutely terrible. Uh, this is one of the reasons why White 2 is better than Black 2. Just this fight's a lot easier for any route, honestly. The main reason being, you can just set up X items onto like one Pokemon. So here I'm gonna X Attack and X Speed the Sand Slash. So you kind of just get a juked up Sand Slash. Yeah, these two Pokemon are kind of fodder. Pig Knight's also gonna be fodder pretty soon. If we took any damage, we would heal. Uh, we would heal um, Sand Slash using Pig Knight's turn. Um, I guess Pig Knight's gonna get some of the experience because it is not um, fainting. Okay, well, it just got ganged up on, so it is dead. And this should be a completely free fight after this. If he uses Wide Guard, it nullifies um, spread moves, and Magnitude is a spread move, so we can't use Magnitude here. So yeah, I'd say this fight's probably easier for Sand Slash than... Um, the main Drillbur route, or um, just Tepig. So we are going to get to Driftvale City. with the most loved music in all of Pokemon, I think, at this point. We get some more story, um, because this is a sequel, and the person on that was just getting hit was from the original Team Plasma. The one that you fought in black and white. And the, the guy who hit him was um, a, I think it's called Neo Team Plasma. Um, but anyways, we're going to get our next encounter here. It is going to be a free Pokemon that we get. And we got to make sure to not hit any of these spinners. Um, oh yeah, it's in this building. We get a free... Um, level 30 Deerling, which is the highest level Pokemon we have. And it's going to be used for pretty much a lot of it. 
well, a lot of the route. Uh, let's see the stats here. Good stats. We're gonna set it first here. And we're gonna fight some extra trainers so we can get um, extra levels, which are gonna be important for Clay, the next gym leader. We don't actually have any good um, grass type moves yet, so we're just gonna have to deal with jump kick. As damage dealing moves. Personally, I love Deerling. I think it's probably in my top 10 of favorite Pokemon for no reason. I don't know. Uh, but it, it is good in this game, so that's at least a positive that it has, even though it's bad in most other games. This Shelmet is annoying, just spamming Curse. I think this person has a cast form. Oh my gosh, no, 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 no. I thought Fain Attack was in the bottom right slot. So yeah, we hit level 31 here. We're still gonna need a little more um, experience. Um, so fun fact, the breeders in this game can be uh, fought as many times as you want, as long as you leave the route. Even if you defeat them, they're still gonna fight you, they're still gonna have the um, vision that they usually have to catch you as you're running around. Which is great for grinding, if you don't want to use um, Audino. So once we leave this route, we're, we might have to, um, we're going to have to avoid that trainer again. And so next we're going to teach Seed Bomb to Deerling, which is an actual grass type move. That's super faint, oh my gosh. So we finally get a grass type move. And we are also going to um, buy a dozen Moo Moo Milks, which heals 100 HP instead of like 200, like the Hyper Potions. We're also gonna get this Expert Belt because we have a level 30 and higher Pokemon. And we're gonna have to buy these um, medical herbs. Heal powders are pretty much full heals, but cheaper. Uh, um, and we're gonna buy three revival herbs, and those are gonna be important for later on for the uh, next gym. That's not uh, clay. We're gonna heal Deerling first. Teach Pit of Fly and equip the Expert Belt for Deerling, which buffs super effective moves, which is going to be pretty important.
So we're gonna have to fight um, Rude, I think. Which is a... I don't know where that name came from, but... Interesting name, at least. Um, we're gonna have to use Jump Kick more, which is stressful, unless you crit it, obviously. I, I don't know why I'm getting so many crits. Switch to Sand Slash because I don't trust... Um, because Sue about to Flying type, it kind of hurts to get hit. Misses, we're gonna use Rock Tomb. Attract is annoying, but we take it out at least. We should hit level 32 and learn Energy Ball. Which is going to help us out as a special attacking move against usually physically bulky Pokemon. In Clay's Gym at least. And we're also going to get another Pokemon here. Uh, it's going to be the Zorua, which is going to be um, end Zorua, and this Zorua has guaranteed stats, which means that it's really consistent for this kind of category. It has a hasty nature, which is minus defense plus speed. And then it also has 30 IVs in all stats, which means it's pretty much as good as the gym leader's Pokemon. Let's see if I remember the route for this. And this is one of the rare cases where um, going up and talking to the trainers isn't faster. Because um, I think it's number one... You do save their walking animation, which usually takes longer than you just running up to them because they're gonna walk. But it, I think it's something about... Um, like if you walk up to a trainer and talk to them usually, there won't be like a exclamation point popping up above them, like this exclamation point, but it always shows up even if you talk to these trainers in this gym specifically. So I think talking to them isn't any faster. We're gonna try to get level 33 here. Well, not here, but in within the next trainer. Uh, we are going to fight an extra trainer here, so we get level 33. Usually we turn right here, but we're going to fight... Actually, no, right here, and then we're going to fight this trainer. We do hit level 33 here, which is one level away from evolving, but there's always an item that um, lets us evolve, uh, well, gain a level, and it's the rare candy that we got from Castilia City, so we're going to use that.
So we are going to evolve here and get obviously get a stat buff. And I'm also going to get a drink. Goated Pokemon. No, I'm gonna save here again just in case if everything goes wrong, which it can for this fight sometimes. So, obviously, buffed clay here has an extra Pokemon, but it's Onyx, so it's pretty much irrelevant. But one of its moves... It, so it has Sturdy, which can be really annoying. And it is annoying, actually. So we're gonna have to use Takedown here. And hopefully it doesn't set up the Sand. Uh, rock polish doubles its speed. Hopefully it doesn't set up sand. Please don't. Okay, good. Um, so if it sets up sand, we're gonna have to kind of stall turns. Just because of Excadrill, who has sand force as an ability. It pretty much buffs all of uh, Excadrill's attacks. That it has, by a lot. And it can get pretty dangerous for Saw's book. Um, currently this fight is going amazing. So, let's just hope we don't miss our jump kicks. Okay, looks like we can KO it with the next one. Please don't flinch. Okay. That's fine. Slash crit can be pretty scary too. Okay, should be good, yep. And nice. I think I'm first trying all of these gym leaders, which is crazy. Um, next, we're gonna go to the PWT. Um, pretty much everyone's favorite uh, part of this game, if you're not a speedrunner. just because of some things I'm going to talk about in a little bit. Honestly, the great thing about uh, Baton Pass is we have three Pokemon that could do pretty well against all the trainers here that we're going to go against in the tournament. Unlike um, the usual any percent, where if you die once, all your other Pokemon are kind of fodder, so you can't really do much to fight back. Especially for Colrus. If you're not running Excadrill because of paralysis. The first fight is the rival fight, I'm gonna lead with a Duat, so we're just gonna demolish it with Seed Bomb. 
Unfortunately, the other two Pokemon aren't going to be as simple. But I think with a plus attack nature, we should be able to Oko everything here. So the worst part, or the worst part about um, this uh, PWT is that the opponent's um, abilities and natures, I think, maybe not the natures, but definitely the abilities are random. So a couple Pokemon, the rival fight isn't bad. It's just um, Charon and Chorus who are going to be really annoying depending on what ability they have. What inspiring names, H and B. Reminds me of Pencil. Um, so, Charon Stoutland has one of two abilities. Sand Force, not Sand Force, a Sand Rush or Intimidate. And we really want Sand Rush because Intimidate's in a lower attack. And make um, some but one ranges. And we have Intimidate, that's fine. Um, but I guess since we're plus attack, it really doesn't matter. If you're really picky, you kind of lose a couple seconds from the um, text from it being Intimidate. Which I think is hardly relevant. So yeah, the Expert Belt boost also helps with these ranges, so that's why we grab it. And Colrus is next. Since we're not using a ground type as our lead, depending on the first Pokemon Magneton's ability, it will survive one turn and the ability sturdy. So again, you might lose a couple. You do lose time from the text boxes. So we're just gonna have to hope that it doesn't have sturdy because it's gonna go for Thunder Wave and that is severely crippling. But if we do get paralyzed, we still have Sand Slash in the back and it can just handle everything, so. Uh, missing is also an option here, I guess. There is no way. <laughs> I, you know, honestly, I was surprised that we didn't miss single jump kick earlier anyways, so... And it wasn't sturdy either, so, well... That's fun. Um, we don't lose that much time anyways. If I can play correctly. Which I probably should have digged the LGM. Magnitude 4. Okay, nice. Well, um... Yeah, hopefully Sawsbuck doesn't, um, do that ever again. <laughs> Missing twice in a row.
We do get one BP that we are going to use. It's not really important that we grab anything with the one BP, but it can just help out in a couple places. We're gonna buy a vitamin. The Carbos is the one that boosts speed. That's gonna be used for a later Pokemon. And we're back to the pirate ship uh, that we saw in Castelia. And here we're just gonna have to get jumped by these people. Yeah, three on like uh, 10 or so. But obviously, since we have uh, main character syndrome, we, we think we're gonna win, and we will, but... We do keep takedown here. Well, we kept takedown instead of feint attack because it would match up better as a, and it's also a stab move. And we have a bunch of Pokemon in the back, so we should be fine. Um, Charon's kind of really overpowered at this point in the game because normal types were kind of broken in this generation too. At least early on. Uh, Stalin's going to demolish everything pretty much with um, Strength or Thunder Fang. You know, same thing. But, um, yeah. This fight's pretty easy. We're not gonna need Charm, even though it probably could help against the rival. Please don't- okay, well, we just got poisoned, so Sawsbuck is dead. And that's why we have Sand Slash. Also, we are- We're not going to, um, we're not going to revive with the Revival Herb because that's needed for a specific fight in the future. Uh, strength is just going to take this out, isn't it? No? Okay. No, we, we, we wiped out half the entire group and they're still like telling us how many they are, how many there are. Level 30! 
No, why? Why would you water post Grimer? Dude, why does the Pokemon on the right look like me? Okay, I'm surprised that one hit KO. Um, we're gonna say goodbye to Sand Slash pretty soon. Sawsbuck is going to stay with us for a little bit. We are going to come fly back here later on in the run. But first we're going to go to the Poco Center. Goodbye, um, goodbye, and you're going to come with me later, so yeah, okay. Did I, wait, I need to heal him. Saw's butt needs to be healed. Uh, we're gonna buy... This shit's... 15 of these should set us up for the rest of the game. And then 11 Dusk Balls. Uh, that is the reason why we set the time tonight, because Dusk Balls are probably the best Pokeballs in the game. Behind, like, Quick Balls. Oh my gosh. So, Charon is going to talk to us, going to give us the HM for Surf. Which is going to be taught to Herdier. The Lillipup can't learn it though. Uh, we're going to see this Cobalion. Which, um, you know, I don't know why this cutscene existed. We are going to grab this hidden protein. Again, for safety. Um, so, probably the hardest gym leader in the game that isn't Roxy, or at least in contention as the hardest, is Skyla. Just gets super buffed with actually good move pools on her Pokemon. And unlike a lot of the Pokemon that we've been using, we're gonna have to reset for a or catch a really good Zeb Striker. And even then, it's really like inconsistent.
So we, if we do catch his up striker, we're gonna have to check its stats. So Skyla kind of gets buffed, the move pool gets significantly buffed, um, and she also obviously gets an extra Pokemon. And I sure hope I don't hit any optionals before we get there. Please be level 33's up striker. Nope. Um, so there can be two levels for his Abstrika, level 31 and 33. Um, level 33 is way more consistent. Uh, like I said, with the attacking side, because of um, the, the stat calculator, well, damage calculator, level 33 does way more than level 32, compared to 32 versus 31. Um, if I am playing Risky, I can just YOLO the Zep Striker, but I would not recommend it at all. Uh, since I'm way up here, I'll probably just save and just catch one Zep Striker. Um, if the Zepstrika we get is... Well, if, if I wanted to play safe, I could go to the Dark Grass, which has higher level encounters. But the encounters are harder to catch. Okay. Uh, Zepstrika is a 20% encounter, so... One of the worst, um things to try to find in this baton pass route. There's one that's at just 10%, but that'll be later. This is actually crazy. Um, probably the biggest negative about running Baton Pass is the inconsistencies, like just ha not getting encounters quick enough, um, having bad stats sometimes can really hurt, and obviously getting crit hurts for any type of run. It's just that it can be mentally taxing after... I'd say looking for, yeah, after like 13 encounters, which you are going to have to do for at least every um, Pokemon game with the gym, with the gym system. So yeah, the RNG can get really bad, that's level 31. We do also want a female Zepstrika if we can get it. Uh, because um, the first, the lead Pokemon, 
of Skyla has a tract. And it's gonna be female. And I guess there aren't gay Pokemon. Now we're gonna check the stats here. We are looking for plus defense is good. Ooh, Spadef is not great, but it has great HP. So yeah, I think this is good. This is good. Thankfully, first tries of Striker, it can get bad if we don't get it. Um, unlike the original black and white, we don't have to go up the tower. But we are going to grab the lucky egg. It's going to be important for um, a Pokemon later. Well, I guess it's it's going to be important for almost every Pokemon. Uh, we're going to teach Surf. Curdier doesn't have to learn anything more. And we are going to... I forgot to heal. Okay, now we are going to fly back. Because I am very not confident in my movement to go back down. I, I think the fastest way is to just run back. I'd say this gym is anxiety incarnate. The gym puzzle, at least. Because... After a certain point, you can't kind of get blown back, and if you get blown back into a trainer, it's a lot of time loss. Um, I should probably go in here. So yeah, anytime you bonk, you can really get screwed over. I'll play it safe here. And this last portion is just evil, honestly. Obviously saving before Skyland. So we did buy the Revival Herbs for Skyla specifically, um, because we can barely take any of um, the moves that are being thrown at us. If the capture card will work correctly. Okay. So we're going to lead with Pursuit. Um, I, I'm just going to reset for that one. That, yeah, if this was normal mode, it'd just get Heart Stamp, which is significantly weaker. Oh wait, no, I didn't first try Bird, that's right. He just crit me to hell. Um, and it's kind of a trend that um, since we don't get any X items before this point, we're just going to have to die and revive multiple times. And in this fight specifically, we're going to have to use Revival Herbs, which heal us to full while reviving us. So we are going to try Flame Charge here. That's fine. Um, if we had normal revives instead, we'd have to, like, sack two Pokemon to revive to full. Because we aren't taking anything. 
Thankfully, we had females of Stryka, which makes us consistent for the first fight, at first part at least. We are gonna use Flame Charge to be faster and use Spark, which is gonna kill the Zubat. I mean, Zubat, sorry. And then Swana is next. This thing is also extremely fast and it has Surf. And if we don't take it out in one hit, we're gonna die. But we have to be plus one speed for it to, um, for Zip Strike it to be faster. And we are faster here, so we are gonna use Spark. It's gonna do about half and we're gonna die. And we're gonna use another Revival Herb. We are going to have to take a single Psychic. And it's really tough sometimes, and we barely survive it this time. But we do get the kill. If we didn't have better H... This is probably max HP. But if we had minus... Uh, Spadef at all, we would have to reset and find another Zep Striker. Uh, thankfully, we're plus defense here. Plus defense nature, so we can just spark and we will survive a, at least two X Scissors always. So, yeah, this is. This is probably the fight where you have to really look for a great Zip Striker or like a great Pokemon to use with great uh, IVs, or otherwise you can't win at all, because Sigilith um, just Oko's you. We are going to fly. To, um, I don't remember what it's called. Lakunosa Town, I think. I don't know why we can't just like fly to, uh, what's the city called? Um, uh, the one, Opelucid City, yeah, that one, um, directly, so you can further the story. But I guess it's less it would be less gameplay, so uh, so re this reversal mountain is designed differently between black two and white two. And in black two you'd have to fight extra trainers if I remember correctly.
We are going to grab this PP up, so we don't have to use as many like elixirs and stuff like that. The rock polish TM is in here, and if we didn't have a different um, setup move, we could have used rock polish instead. But there is a Pokemon that is going to be using um, a better version of rock polish later on. Sawsbuck is not winning very much, I'd say. Mushana is literally doing nothing. Unbelievable. Just kidding, it's just slow. Was that not a crit? Nice paralysis. This is where you would get the false swipe TM, which we don't need. Because there's nothing better than eyeballing um, what moves to use to catch a Pokemon. Um, so here is one of the harder fights in the game, I'd say. Now uh, this is the third rival fight. I think third or fourth. Probably fourth because of PWT. Um... In a game without X items available at this point, and having only moves that that can set up like work up and home claws, and then having a Pokemon that has taunt so you can't use those moves, really makes this fight atrocious if you're just running normal speed runs of this game. Um, otherwise, we can just you know be like us and just use Spark multiple times. Level 35, let's go. Uh, Cinesage, I don't think we're actually going to be able to beat. Because it does so much damage. Okay, well, crit I don't think mattered. This is another fight where we have to use the... Uh, revival herb. What the hell? Horn Leech. Another reason why I love this Pokemon, but I am not going to use that. Hopefully, we don't die to Aqua Jet. Wouldn't be surprised if we do. Okay, well, it's in. It's in a uh, torrent now, which kind of sucks. I th Zev Striker should be able to take one. If not, I, I will switch in. I will revive Sawsbuck. Zev Striker might go, you got this. Easy wins. Okay, good. 
So yeah, since we have the grass and electric type, it's kind of easy to bully the Samurai. We do learn Discharge here, but we don't need it. Zep Strike is kind of done, so is Saw's Bike. We are going to catch the next Pokemon here. For the Dragon Gym, which is honestly a difficulty like Spike in this game because it's so high level compared to what we would be. But we don't need a Absol. I'm surprised we didn't have to. Um, we didn't encounter anything before then. Uh, we are given a free legendary in this game. Uh, it's not a really good legendary, offensively at least. Uh, we are going to use the Master Ball here because um, it's a legendary. It's kind of optimal to use a Master Ball here because its catch rate is so low. So Cobalion's kind of going to carry us through just a little bit more of the game. Until we do another main swap. We kind of have to listen to this grandma talk a little bit. I don't even remember what she talks about. Oh, it's about the original Pokemon. Uh, the one where it's Kyurem and Reshiram and Zekrom fused. Wait, this is Lacunosa Town. Is it? Oh, I know, I think the earlier one was Lentimos Town. I mean, I'm so good at the names of cities. Anyways, there's an item here that we are going to get, and it's pretty important for all the Pokemon that we use. It is the Metronome. Uh, Piplup enjoy enjoyers will really like the metronome or BSB players. Uh, so the metronome pretty much... If you keep using the same move, it just gets stronger and stronger. And I think... It caps at five consecutive uses becomes five consecutive uses becomes like a fifty percent boost in damage. Also, the landing animation does not <laughs> save time, Cobalion. Honestly, I hate Samurai in this fight because uh, it just uses revenge. 
and nothing else. Uh, like, what are you accomplishing by using revenge on um, quadruple resisted Pokemon? The sprite looks so much better than in black and white. Why would you honk? Okay, yeah, this this fight, this camera is almost as bad as Barry um, in Spear Pillar with its Munchlax. Well, with yeah, with the Munchlax, it's crazy. Dude, how is it not hot for its insulin, dude? So we do grab this hidden rare candy. It is going to be used very soon. From now on, we do have a lot of X items. Well, we can buy X items and we can also get a lot of rare candies which is what we are going to be doing here. Also, go to music. Yeah, the Swords of Justice just kind of like pop up and just stand there waiting to be caught for some reason. It's just like the Kelvio movie. I think it is kind of like based off of that in a way. Okay, it is time to say goodbye. Um, to Sawsbuck and Zebstrika. Uh, this is where we buy X items. And we're gonna also buy Quick Balls here, because they're the best Pokeballs. You get a boosted catch rate after one turn, just the first turn. So you don't need to buy too many. A lot of X items are needed for these later fights. But in exchange, the gym leader fights are way easier from now on. Not way easier, but they are easier. Probably the coolest gym in the entire series. Well, coolest but not the most fun to uh, be on.
I do kind of want to check the attack stat of Kobali in here. 87? Oh, nice crit. Um, if you're gonna do that, that's fine. Also, I forgot that Kobolian's attack is like base 90. So if we go to the right, we have a more defense focused Actually, no, if we go to the right, it's more offensively focused. So they're gonna use a lot of like Dragon Dance and Dual Chop and Flamethrower and stuff like that. The left side would be more defensive, they'd use like Substitute and Taunt and stuff like that. And obviously, this side is less bulky, so it is more. Um, it is easier to beat. Uh, we're gonna have to hope for a flinch here because that plus two, I think, fracture. Okay. Um, I guess a crit works. You know what? Whatever. I think we are minus attack though. Flamethrower does do a lot. Um, so the next options for fights on the right is triple battle, and the left is rotation battle, and like before, uh, triple battles are always better. You can just, uh, buff up one Pokemon. It would be better if Herdier had Intimidate here, but it doesn't, so that's fine. It's not too much of a negative. Um, since Cobalion's attack is so low in general, we're gonna just set up X attacks with everyone. And yeah, our fodder Pokemon die, and that's pretty good, because... Because the main, the main move in this gym is Dragon Tail, which forces you out, but if there are only three poke, if there's only one Pokemon in your party that's alive, then it won't switch you out. So it prevents that from happening. Also, if Hurry or Urpidov didn't like faint, they get a they get a lot of experience. And Cobalion wouldn't reach level 48, which is what we want to reach. Uh, we are going to use a rare candy and teach sword stance. Which does save a couple turns. I'm also going to save. Because honestly, dying here would kind of suck.
Uh, depending on our speed, we're gonna have to X speed here. And we are faster, so it's fine. Judging by the attack I had earlier, I'm gonna have to um, sword stance three times. But now we should all be set. Altari is the extra Pokemon, but it's kind of weak, so it doesn't really matter. Also, I miss how broken the dragon type used to be. Yeah, the first Dredigan does have revenge, so it can really hurt sometimes if it um, keeps using it. But otherwise, it's pretty simple. So, yeah. We could have saved a turn if it used um, Night Slush, I think. Night Slush or Crunch. If only we could dig out of this gym. We do get more exposition here, and more dialogue, it's awesome, it's great. cutscene. I also, I think an underrated reason why 
white 2 is faster than black 2 is like the ice patterns here are a little different because Opelucid City is fundamentally like a different city in that game. So you, you lose less time on the ice. Um, the one annoying part about these trainers is this Golbat and the next trainer, so Viper, both have Haze, which nullifies stat raising moves. We would have usually went for two sword stances there, but I went for Night Slash, which boosts our attack. I think an Ice Beam and an Ice Shard would have probably gone close to killing, so I'm gonna heal here. Since we are slower than pretty much everything here, I'm gonna X Speed. And we're gonna heal that confusion. Another free heal here. And I think this is the last, this next fight is the last time we're ever using Cobalion in this run.
So we are going to a new part of Unova that wasn't in the originals. Probably one of the sickest locations. The Marine Tube. So we're first going to get Marlin. Um, wait, hold on. Grab a heart scale. I think there's one more, hold on. I need to remember where it is. There it is, okay. Another protein. We're gonna actually catch like three Pokemon here. No, I'm not gonna see. This is a guaranteed Amoongus. I know, very funny, very funny. Uh, it's gonna be used for the water type gym. Now we're just going to use a quick ball on it. Alright, perfect. Um, so the next encounter is going to be an Excadrill, so we're going to have to wait for Dust Cloud. Which, if you've ever played um, this game, Manipolis, it can be a pain to find a Dust Cloud at all. And not only that, we are also uh, going to have to check the stats on the Excadrill. Okay, nice. Um, if the water ever bubbled... Now uh, we'd have to leave the cave entirely. Come on, one ball. Nice. Okay, yeah, so we'll give this one a nickname. And we'll check its stats if it doesn't have... If it doesn't have good enough special defense. Or attack. Party 75, great. Now we wait for the Repel to run out and then we're gonna catch a Pile of Swine. Um, in normal mode, we could catch a Sneasel. But Gets this is also, I think, another trainer that's buffed. So we wouldn't be able to use um, Sneasel or Weavile. I think I did try ride, routing it, it's just that 
think Seismo Toad was maybe too bulky. So yeah, we're looking for a pile of swine. We can take any step for pile of swine. I'm also going to check the trainer ID that we have. Because we have a little extra puzzle that we have to do that's tied to our trainer ID. Should be a 20% encounter, there it is. I think Mammoth Swine is one of my favorite Pokemon too, but this kind of sucks that um, the free evolutions really suck. So I'll check the stats, not stats, but um, trainer ID is six five three three zero. Wow. Okay, well our password is probably one of the longer ones, unfortunately. And then we're going to use the cardless and proteins because we're probably going to need it. Fly back to Shumalau so we can fight the gym leader. We are going to kind of spam Giga Drain here. This Mantine or Mantine, whatever you want to call it, um, it has too high of a Spadef stat, and we don't have enough Giga Drain PP to use it on this Mantine. So we're going to switch to Excadrill, and this thing shouldn't have a water type move. It has, I think it has Air Slash, but it doesn't have anything else. So we're just gonna rock slide it. Because we're in like no threat. I still think this is the best gym puzzle of all time.
Please don't flinch. Okay. Soak is probably the most annoying move to get here. But it does um, save us from consistent bullying. This thing doesn't have a psychic type move, so we can just Giga Drain. And Amoongus has such a high HP stat that we're gonna have to use um, Hyper Potions to heal it. Um, I think Drayden's the easiest gym, but I think this might be one of the hard- this Marlin is also pretty hard. Just because of a few, few difficult parts, specifically like um, the extra Pokemon that is added into this fight. So we're gonna first set up Expedefs because this Whale Lord is gonna spam Ice Beam. And it sucks a lot. It hurts a lot too. And after that it's gonna start spamming Earthquake instead. Which I'd rather it having spam Earthquake than Ice Beam, but we are gonna have to set up X to fit oh, I guess it's still going for That's weird. Anyways, we're gonna set up X Defense. That's where I'm gonna survive. We're gonna set up X Defense specifically for a Pokemon later on. Did I max Ether? No, I did not. Brain Dance is honestly pretty good to come out. 71 defense. Okay, so we only have to set up 2x defense because we have great defense. And since there is. God. Um, we're gonna set up x specials. Um, to take out the extra Pokemon that wasn't in the original, uh, in the normal mode, in the normal mode. I really hope this thing uses Skull at some point. Nice. Come on. I thought it unfreeze. Nope, I guess not. Uh, I think it's out of Ice Beam PP, which is fine, which is actually great. So we can unfreeze without the risk of getting frozen again. Whale Lord's an Oko, but the next Pokemon is pretty bulky, so it should be like a 2 or 3 hit KO. Also has Air Slash, so it can be really annoying. That's why I also set up X Spideps, even though we had to set it up for Whale Lord 2. Um, and the reason why we set up X Defense is because of this Caracosta. If it goes for uh, Shell Smash, which is a broken move. Oh shoot, I need to do this. Probably. No, probably not. If it goes for Rock Slide, it does way too much for us to take. 
And if we flinch, we instantly lose, so we just set up X defense instead. Come on, stop being stupid. Good. Unfortunately, it has sturdy, and the reason why we don't go for clear smog here is because we want the metronome boost to, to add up, and we're at like five uses. This is so dumb. Maybe this game is just bad. Okay, well, um... No, nah, I'm gonna reset, that was dumb. Get like triple... I think it was like quadruple flinch into crit? So we're back to square one. I should have used a max ether. Okay, fuck. Cool. Uh. No, great time to use a max ether. I'm kind of glad they lowered the crit chance in later games. Rain Dance is good. I could use an extra Expedef to possibly lower the chance of it using Ice Beam, but I don't want to risk later on in the game where I have to take a, cu a couple um, Expedef lowering moves like Shadow Ball. They don't freeze, this is the last one, actually the second last hyper potion I'll have to use if I can beat Caracosta. Use Rain Dance, you want to use Rain Dance. There is no way, dude. Now you use Rain Dance like... No more Ice Beams though, it looks like. Why didn't they get rid of Freeze as a status condition? Wait. Oh my gosh, I'm so dumb. I have heal powders. 
I'm literally dis I'm literally choosing to die. I am legitimately doing this to myself, aren't I? Let's go use Rain Dance again. You love Rain Dance. Please use Rain Dance again. You <laughs> kick cool. Kick cool. Rain dance, rain dance, you love rain dance, come on, rain dance, rain dance, come on. Earthquake shouldn't kill from full if it's if it's a crit. Good job, good job using rain dance, good job, good job. I am so smart. Please don't. <laughs> I thought you were out of ice beams. No, this is truly a moment of all time. Oh yeah, if we get burned it's kind of bad too, because we can barely even take Caracosta's um, rock slides. Honestly, the best outcome would for Caracosta would be... What am I doing? Oh, come on. Wait, hold on. I, I might be cooked here too. Why am I feeling confusion against this guy, honestly? Wait, hold on. Ultimate strategy. This this fight is genuinely horrible. No, I'm going free. My goat. Yeah, I'm gonna have to heal you though. <laughs> No, 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 no. Guys. Not gonna lie, this game's kinda bad. This game is kinda bad. No, this is why we have that extra 30 minutes of uh, time. Oh look, my PB is like 5 hours, but 5 and a half hours is honestly crazy. It, it had to be- it had to be done. Oh. <laughs> uh, th this this game is so mm.
This is like my fifth attempt. I've been here for like 10 minutes. Did I not max E3? I probably didn't. I am calm. I am calm. This is, this is challenge mode. This, this is challenge mode. The name doesn't lie. Watch this max ether. Yes, Rain Dance, good job, Wailor. You, you are the greatest of all time. I haven't seen Karakosta in like 10 minutes. This is not okay. Save healing items. Um, I would max ether and then save because I keep th thinking I'm not gonna get crit this time, but I end up do getting get crit every time. So maybe I should do that at this point. I'm losing more time by not saving after it. No, and then this is the time I'm gonna win. And then this time I'm gonna win. It's it's guys, I swear Pokemon's a good game. I swear 30% flinch is great game design. I, so I, I think it's because in Showdown, you have, you can set up like all the EVs and stuff and usually you max out HP and Spadef. And you also get 31 IVs. Uh, the Whale Lord has 31, 30 IVs, but not the Amoongus. Why'd I do that? So it probably is both here in Showdown. Um, that's not any better, but I will take it for now. Okay, okay, cool. <laughs> um, this is
This truly is a Pokemon experience of all time. You are so right for seeing that. It should make everything crit at this point, like it. Keep using rain dancing, love the rain. No, you find this entertaining? This is- I, I've been doing this for like... <laughs> 50 minutes! <laughs> There's no way. Honestly, if if we had sleep power, it'd be great. It'd be a great experience. Look, in, in speedrunning, bad things can happen, and this is this is the bad thing that is happening. <laughs> Guys, I don't think I'm beating the game in 5 hours and 30 minutes. Yeah, you know what, I should get kicked out for saying that this is not RNG manipulated at this rate. My goat, you, you survived two ice beams. Yeah, I know, the first run went really far. No, I'm actually really grateful that I do have 30 minute leeway. Ooh, come on, come on, come on, come on. Dude, I haven't even seen Mantine in a long time. And I don't know any way to make this any safer, though. We're fully set up, guys. I'm ready. I'm ready to win. <laughs> and this has to be some kind of joke. Oh, yes. Yes, my goat. Thank you for using Rain Dance. Let's go, we're gonna see Mantine, guys, it's awesome, finally! <laughs> it's, it's faster anyways, it doesn't even matter if I heal off the confusion.
Let's go! Let's go! Beating the 50-50 twice! Let's go, B! Let's go! I'm so good at the game! And Garagosta, let's go, let's go, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. No, and, and it begins, guys, it, and it begins. It begins, it begins. No, <laughs> please! Okay, Shell Smash is fine, but we're like, almost in kill range. It's over. It's over. It's finally over. Let's go! Let's go! I never want to see this fishing man ever again. I want to know how much time lost that was. Oh, dear. I think the Elite Four is actually easier. It's it, it's just a couple of these gyms that can be the nicest, the most loving Pokemon experiences of all time. Why is Terrakion so wide? No, not in full supply. So we're gonna teach Ancient Power, um, so it can evolve, and we're also gonna teach reteach Ice Fang because it needs it, and it's like the only physical Ice type move it learns. Uh, until this point, physical ice, ice type moves just don't exist in this generation besides Icicle Crash. And you got a breed to teach that, so. Um, we teach Iron Head over Horn Drill because this ain't Gen 1.
Also, the shards work out perfectly, it's great. Water bubble, please! Okay, cool. That's fine. I think... I don't think Ice Shard is um, a level up move for Pyloswine. And even then it's also weaker. The Elite Four team, it's it's gonna be pretty interesting. Thankfully, like all the um all the stuff is pretty like um this route's kind of just a slight change from the normal route. Like the normal mode route for uh, baton pass. Just harder. If you can tell from Marlin. Uh, we're also gonna we're also coming up to um a Pokemon we're gonna catch again. This X drill is pretty decent, so we should be set for the late game. Please don't. Where's my flinch? This game chooses favorites, it's confirmed. I already know one of these encounters that I'm going to have to do is going to be, like, never showing up. Um, okay, the next encounter. So, this time we're going to save again for before the encounter, but this time it's more about the ability and not the natures and stats. Because of... The Elite Four is also buffed. Instead of four Pokemon, they have five. And one of the Pokemon just hard counters Crustle. So what we're gonna have to do is okay, hold on. I'm actually about to die. Is we're gonna make sure sorry. Excuse me. Uh we're gonna hope that Sturdy activates. Perfect. Um, yeah, the stats of this crustal don't matter. It is going straight to the box, though. I'm also going to heal, because I should have earlier. We also made, um, we also used Sword Stance before Iron Head because some attack stats don't actually, depending on the Crustle's nature and IVs, we can actually, um, check if it, if Sturdy activates.
But here we are, to the pirate ship. Um, okay, yeah, so in Black 2, the puzzle here is a little different. Here is the key card, but in Black 2, it's the um, warp panels. And you gotta, like, turn each, like, laser off individually. And in White 2, it's obviously the key card. There's no way Samurai is still using Encore for no reason. You can you can take down the Drapion, please take down the Drapion. <sighs> I'm genuinely just I'm not surprised anymore. Why would you use Encore at all? Okay, I should remember the puzzle for this. It's just, um, I was playing Black 2 yesterday. It should be the first room. So Hugh can stop time. Give me the key card. And unfortunately, the password was Reshiram. Um, the, the changes in challenge mode is every gym leader's stats get buffed but not as much as you'd think. They pretty much get 31 IBs with technically the same level as in normal mode, but their levels are higher here. Um, and they usually get an extra Pokemon. And every other trainer also has extra levels. Uh, they don't get EVs, thankfully. Because otherwise, I don't think we'd win. Okay, spelling, spelling, re, re. Uh, 
Let's go. You should be better in this double battle. Please don't use like uh please don't use Encore. It's a great move in Sun and Moon. And Heartbolt, I guess. Yeah, you probably would have used Encore anyways, it doesn't matter. Honestly, BDSP sounds really fun to run in general. Besides, um, st sturdy being a thing, like actually functioning as modern times, like modern times. I mean, I don't know what was up with Samrod this entire run. It, it usually goes for actually good moves, but this time it just kept using Encore. Another epic cutscene. And a free drink break. I still don't know, I still don't understand how this thing is flying, though. Like the power of Kirin, right? I don't know if I have enough max repels at this point. Should have enough. Four does sound about good. Um, okay. So in Giant Chasm, we're going to leave through the south exit once. So when we use an escape rope out of the Giant Chasm, we can get out there instead of, like, the entrance we came in from.
Uh, so this Weezing is usually just uses Earthquake. So let's just hope it does. And I'm also going to use Earthquake here to save uh, the power points of Iron Head because we're going to have a double battle here. I already know the route would be completely different if the experience wasn't like this. Uh, before we go in, we're gonna pipe the swine here with the EXP share so we can get experience. Wait, I should heal Excadrill too. Am I running out of healing items? So we have a forced double battle here kind of easy since we can just, you know, make sure Excadrill, like, gets set up all the way. Wait, no, 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 no. Also, we're gonna focus the fighting type side because um, we don't want to get jump kicked or high jump kicked, I guess. Um, so the pile of swine we caught was the lower level one because we can catch uh, level 46 pile of swines and you usually don't get all the experience you need in this fight. So um, you'd also have to keep equipping like um, whatever item it is, um, the EXP shared on it so you can all get all the way to level 47. Wait, hold on. Wait, 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 wait. No, no, I ha actually... At level 46, it's still evolve. It's just I have to keep equipping it so I can learn Earthquake.
No, I didn't need the max revive, I need the max ether. Elixir, actually, sorry. Uh... This puzzle is way easier in this game than in Black Tier. Nope, I gotta go through here. Um, so we're gonna have to fight Zenazalin again, so we are going to Max Elixir. And we're also going to use the Zinc to take, um, well, it'll be, it'll be shown later. It'll be obvious what I have to kind of do to play around it. Okay, this game, this game could not be any more fun. I know it's gonna go for a confuse rate, even if I heal it off. Hold on, wasn't I supposed to fight? I was supposed to fight uh, Forest Torx, if I remember correctly. A will. should have read the notes more thoroughly. Um, Cold Rest is a fight that is pretty free if you're Excadrill, everyone else kind of struggles a lot. I'm just going to have to hope I don't um, get completely destroyed by Getsis. Which is actually pretty unlikely that I don't get destroyed by Getsis if I don't have full restores. Um, yeah, so Magneton can't really do much. It does have Sturdy though. No, uh, that's going to hurt. Uh, flinch please. Nice. Uh, next should be Magna Zone, it also has Sturdy, so we're gonna have to. There it is, Earthquake. So we're gonna have to iron head first. Nice double shift here is great. Uh, 
Uh, I am definitely not going to heal, um... Um, Excadrill because I don't have enough healing items. To support this. We're gonna equip the metronome now so we don't- it doesn't like- Take all the experience we need. I used to always think that this cane would like was like kind of sharp at the bottom and it like um, poke a hole through the floor. <laughs> Maybe I wasn't the brightest kid. Honestly, I don't get why Excavate Grill gets Sword Stance and Earthquake so early, like, how's that fair? Level 32 and 36, you know, 36 and 42? Yeah, 36 and 42. So it's never ever going to use Drill Run, but it's like specifically for X to Drill. Oh my gosh. water this off. We also have Cobalion in the back so we can just take on Kirim if needed. really is an annoying move.
So we are gonna max repel, uh, well, put Mammoth Swine in the first slot in our party. Because we, after fighting Kurum, we're gonna have to fight Getzus immediately after. Uh, you can tell Getzus is kind of a, um, kind of a not great person because, um, every single game that he's in, the fight against him is always after you've fought someone else. And thankfully N heals you both times, so it doesn't really matter. Also, N's dialogue is faster if you don't um, hold one of the buttons. It's kind of like the opposite of um, every Pokemon game after the DS era. Where if you usually want to hold B and like mash A and um, sometimes L, you get the fastest text option, but N's the other way around where if you do hold one of the A or B buttons, the text actually goes slower. And I'm pretty sure that's just uh, for the people who are who want to read the text. So, optimal mashing should be like, um, mashing it after the entire text box appears. Text box appears. Only Kirim had Ice Punch. Black Kirim, at least. Then it would actually be good competitively, or at least decent. It wouldn't be the best, but it'd still be good. This is in case we lose to get this. Actually, maybe sending us back to the Poke Center might be smart so we can get full restores. That sprite is honestly so cool.
Oh no. Cobalion is consistently faster than this thing, so sending it in instead of Excadrill is kind of smarter if you're slow Excadrill. Okay, please don't be like Marlin. Oh yeah, I do have to take on a flamethrower later on. And okay, ninety five speed is great. Um, okay, yeah, I wish we had four story. I should have bought armor. Protect, good job. Keep protecting, you want to keep protecting. Okay, you see a kill, so... Hyper push train. Okay, good, I'll just heal. Protect again, my goat. One... Two... Okay, three... Okay, please, good... Okay, I think I should be set. Oh, speed F drop. Extra. Um, it's gonna... Oh, I have to Ice Wing first. No, you're supposed to dodge it. It should go for protect, though. Okay, I should be set to sweep. Just gotta hope that, um, Electros, this isn't minus spadef nature. Okay, take it. Also, don't get burned. Oh my god. Don't miss. Please don't miss. Please don't miss. Please don't miss. Easy does it, easy does it. Ice thing. Okay, um, don't miss. Awesome, get this is defeated. Let's go. Get cooked, Bozo. Honestly, Marlin was an absolute catastrophe if you think about it. Well. It is, it was a catastrophe. It was honestly super funny though. 
Actually, it was funny after the first two times, and then it wasn't funny. Dig, let's go. No escape rope. I'm a good player, I would, um, if I'm a good runner, I would avoid the spinners here. <gasps> oh my god. <laughs> uh, I think the... I think the Pokemon in the back is a Jellicent, so I'm gonna Sword Stones here. Oh. No! Oh, okay. So good at this game. <laughs> we don't repel again here, and here is the probably largest. We have to catch two, but one here. And wait, hold on. Okay, yeah, just two Pokemon here. The first one is gonna be Mianfu, and there, there it is. And then the last Pokemon. It should be a Glidar. A 10% encounter, it's, it's never happening. Stop! This is probably the worst search in the entire game. Nanfu was 15%, so it wasn't too bad. The trauma. Come on. Boo. 
Gligar. These are the moments where you question if this po if the Pokemon even appears. Ten percent. Let's go! Now the good thing about this run is that the captures have been pretty fast. Besides this one and Zepstrika. Okay, well the quick ball did, didn't even work. Please don't kill, please don't kill, please don't kill. Easy does it, easy does it. This game sucks. This game absolutely horrible. Easy, okay. Uh, what honestly gets me really mad is that I'm not centered here, but it's not optimal, so you know, there's... Um, so for Baton Pass... Um, you can only use one Pokemon of that species. So if I do use Mianfu, I wouldn't be able to use Mianxiao. So that's why I didn't, uh, if you were here, um, I didn't use Tepig and then Pignite for, um, Pignite for Bird. It's not like I'm short on money, so... Just gonna make sure I have enough max repels. What I probably could do is skip strength entirely, honestly.
Now this goes to the Sword Stance, I'm done. Victory Road's also different between the two games, Black and White 2. I always think that this trainer's on the right for some reason. Uh, well, I don't know what this guy has. I think it was Lampent and... Matanga Lampent, I think. That had Coffee Grievous, but probably not. Okay, it does have copper grease and not lamp wind. I'm not even leveling up seriously. Oh yeah, this room. This trainer has a lot of vision. Like, actually good vision. It reminds me of the fire red trainers that like saw you from across the entire screen. I should probably heal. Please stop, please stop, please stop. No, I'm gonna get flinched this next turn. That's crazy. That's crazy. Statistical anomaly. Uh, so we're learning we're learning sword stance here and it's actually worth it because um, it raises our attack double instead of um, by two, two times instead of one time one time like in gen 6 and before which is this game Okay, so what's gonna happen here? Uh, we're giving Zoro the AXP share because he needs to level up a little bit. I'm blind. Um, but unfortunately, we do need to make sure that Zorua gets to level 30 perfectly, so he can evolve, and then also learn um, um, Night Slash, because Zoroark only learns Night Slash at level um, 30. And depending on our speed here, we're gonna X speed. Because Starmie uh, destroyed us.
Oh, this has sturdy, I think. Yeah. Uh, if it flinches, we'll switch out. Okay, yeah, we're, we're dead. That's fine. It's actually honestly what we want. It saves a turn. It's me and Fu. Look. So we are gonna sack this thing. So it perfectly gets level uh, thirty. By using a rare candy. It also revives it. Because of the um, experience. There has to be more optimal experience here, but I still haven't routed that out completely. So, um, equipping the XP share for Crustle will uh, get it to level 43, I think. Yeah, it should get it to level... to the next level, at least. Uh, stop! We learned Shell Smash, the greatest setup move of all time, over Slash, because we're gonna need to use all the other moves. I think. Maybe not Rock Slide. So this next fight is the, the last fight, rival fight. Yeah, this Drillbur is manipulous. Which I do have to do extra setup because it is manipulous, depending on the fight, usually. 129? Yeah, okay. I'm actually gonna lead with an X speed here. It didn't go for... Swagger, well now it did. So we're coming up to the Elite Four here, but they are also kind of, they are buffed, 
they do get one extra um, Pokemon. And I think, if I remember correctly, at least the champion definitely has held items for all of them. But the other, the Elite Four don't, maybe? Because in the, so in the gym leader fights, there were at least one or two Pokemon that had held items, usually just a berry. Um, but here it's pretty much everything, and it usually isn't a berry. I am just going to use the Poké Center heal here. I don't need any more full restores. So we're going to first start off with um, Chantal, the Ghost Elite Four member. And this is probably the cheesiest fight in all of Baton Pass, because it is Zoroark. Uh, we're going to, we purposely put but Hurtier at the back of the party. Oh, I'm gonna save for this fight too. Uh, so we have Hurtier in the back of the party, and the only moves that the lead Kofodrigus has is Will-O-Wisp, Psychic, Shadow Ball, and um, Grass Knot, I think. And Grass Knot's gonna, not going to do much to the Herdier, so it's not going to go for Grass Knot. Um, it's not going to go for Shadow Ball because Herdier is immune to Shadow Ball. And then it's so it's going to go for Psychic every time, and it's going to be immune, but the AI isn't smart enough to realize that it's not going to work at all. So we're going to set up to plus two, and so the item that one of the Pokemon has is a Choice Scarf, which um, 1.5 times its speed, but we're still fast enough. Um, that was three. One more. No, I was... Hold on. Will I have enough X items? Um... Yeah, okay. Uh, so we're gonna use Night Slash here. It's not gonna kill, but because of Metronome, we will be able to kill it next turn. Because we had a hasty nature, we can pretty much outspeed everything. It's guaranteed hasty nature anyways, so... Also, there's sh this Chandelure does have Flame Body as its ability. But even if we get burned, we should one-hit KO everything else. Because Metronome boosted our attack so much. Thank you. 
We don't need to learn bounce here. Oh my No 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 Guys Maybe I am <laughs> That one was deserved. That one was deserved. God Greatest player of all time, trust me guys. It could have just mashed A the entire time. Um, well, we're gonna have to set up and do it all over again. And I'll actually keep count of the X attack X this time. to keep my stylus on the night slash option. Okay, so it does look so yeah, it looks like every single Pokemon has um an item. Thankfully none of them are focus sashes besides Iris's Haxorus. Which is a pretty easy fix in a way. Also, thankfully, this Drifblum doesn't have Aftermath, because that's always the most annoying thing you can have. Okay. I, I'm not playing stupid this time. So next is Caitlyn and our ultimate um, setup move. We're also going to set up Stealth Rock against the Musharna. Because one of the later Pokemon is not weak against a uh, bug, which is the move we're going to be spamming. So, Caitlyn's um, Musharna in normal mode has... Um, I don't remember which one it was. It was either Yawn or Hypnosis, and it got changed to the other one in this version. I think it might be Hypnosis. Anyways, we're gonna... And its only attacking move is Dream Eater. Use Reflect? Oh, 
Okay, I think it does have hip the uh, it's hypnosis. And since its only attacking move is Dream Eater, we don't have to like worry about it. Okay, I really want to miss here. Please don't use Reflect Stop. No! Oh, I I'm supposed to use Stealth Rock there. Oh, well. Okay, that's good. It's gonna go for Dream Eater for sure, because we're gonna die in one hit. Um, so we have Metronome. We are going to pretty much try to um, one hit KO everything. Which, if they're all Psychic types, it well, they are all Psychic types, but if they're just weak to bug, then we can definitely do it. It's just that some Pokémon aren't weak to bug. And the problem is this Metagross here. It has Bullet Punch, so even if we're faster, we're not Okoing it. But we do have Sturdy, so we will survive it, and then... Yeah, Life Orb, Chip, and Stealth Rock should be enough. It's gonna heal here. If we don't kill, we're gonna have to heal back up and wait until it, like, dies from its own damage dealing. Like, it's Life Orb recoil. Uh, and nothing else has priority here. And we're just gonna Oko everything else. So yeah, Caitlyn's pretty free as well. Mianfu's gonna evolve here into Mianxiao. And we'll probably... no, that's the last fight, actually. Uh, next is Marshall, which is just going to be Gligar with Acrobatics. So I pretty much moved around all the items. Excadrill, we're trying to get as much experience for Excadrill as it can. And we're going to use the rare candies at the very end on it. And since Gligar is going to spam the move Acrobatics, we can't use give it the Metronome. Because Acrobatics obviously gets doubled. Like, uh, it becomes 110 base power when you don't have an item. So what we're going to have to do here first is set up a guard spec because we don't want to get our speed lowered by uh, Rock Tomb. And we're going to set up an X Defend for um, a Pokemon later on. It doesn't matter if I get crit, but... And depending on our speed, we're going to set up just one X Speed and we can do that. Also, yeah, Payback is actually this move, the reason why we set up an X Defend. We're gonna set up a plus 6 attack. And the extra Pokemon that Marshall gets is a Lucario. 
So you'd think we're, we're kind of screwed because we use acrobatics as our move, but Lucario's frail enough that it's going to die in one acrobatics. Usually like a 87.5% range if you're minimum attack. We could keep Sky Uppercut to make sure we do get the kill, but it's not really worth it because Sky Uppercut's accuracy is worse than Acrobatics, so the damage, like, um, the expected value of the damage versus the, the chance of hitting versus the chance of actually hitting the range is so, like, about, like, it's pretty insignificant, so just using acrobatics is safer. And so this is um, sock. We're gonna use strength twice for this thing because it has sturdy. And yet yeah, Marshall is good. And next is Mian Xiao. Mian Xiao to uh, Mian Xiao's turn to shine. And this fight is also kind of interesting. I wouldn't say it's really interesting, but it is kind of interesting. Um, so the lead Liopard has the um, ability Unburden, which means that if, you, if they use the item, they're going to double their speed. And it always goes for normal gem boosted fake out first turn. So normal gem um, is a usable item; it gets used. So it's Lyper is always at double speed. It also has this aerial ace, which does a lot. So we're gonna set up X defense. On, on this free turn, and then the next turn, so you can take um, aerial aces. And depending on our defense, which we have good enough defense, we don't have to uh, go for a third X defend. Unless we get crit, of course, but you know, I can't play around that, so. We also did want to have a female Mian Xiao because it's gonna go for attract. Very annoying. But isn't it isn't a big enough deal that we'd have to like get a different Pokemon instead. Just hope that I beat the 50-50 at least once. Nice. So we're gonna go for Drain Punch every time so we can um, heal back our HP, which is gonna be needed to take... Um, well actually, it is just to heal off the Lyopard's damage if I remember correctly. It is also the most accurate move that Mian Xiao has. This thing does have Intimidate, but it's not enough after the boosts. The metronome boosts. Drill didn't hit level 63, so we'll be at level 64 for Iris, which is kind of risky. So there are two routes for this fight, 
and it's one where you can take um, you're faster than the lead high dragon and you're also um, bulky enough to take a fire blast which um, is kind of rare I'd say so but if we can't do either of those we're gonna have to set up X spadefs and X speeds so we're gonna have to take two fire blasts. Um, the problem is that um, Excadrill. Well, actually, no. The the held item of one thirty one. Okay, I'm gonna have to. Uh, Hydreigon does have the Wise Glasses, which boost special attacks by 1.1 times. And we, the reason why we grab Citrus Berries all the way back on Route 4 is because of this fight. Because we're going to have to set up Expedefs to take two Fire Blasts, and we can't take um, two consecutive if we're at plus one Spadef and plus two Spadef. So we're going to have to set up two... We're gonna have extra. We're gonna get healed from the citrus berry, so we can take two um, fire blasts. Uh, the greatest thing that could happen is a miss. It is smarter and safer to go for three expedefs. No, no. Uh... Also, you do not want to see Focus Blast. It can lower your spadef, and you can definitely get um, screwed over by that. Okay, well, I got crit, so... Um, and after plus two attack, we can... Uh, Oko everything. At least at level 65. Um, the one problem um, is the Haxorus, but there is a way to manipulate so that Haxorus always go for Outrage, which is resisted by uh, Excadrill. Please don't, please don't.
So for Hexress, Iron Head would kill, but it has Focus Sash, so it's going to survive 1 HP. Uh, if it flinches, we're fine, we just Iron Head again. Um, but if it doesn't, we're gonna switch, to, we're gonna have to go into Gligar. Which is at least guaranteed to, um, force an, force Haxorus to go for, uh, what's the, what's the name, Outrage? Iris is going to heal this turn though, so we're just gonna have to wait for this turn to end. I'll just... Dex attack, I guess. So we definitely can take an Outrage, but Haxorus does have Earthquake, so we do have to make sure that it doesn't use Earthquake. Um, I'm supposed to, what am I supposed to do? It still hurts a lot, but it's still better to take it than... Also, I'm not sure if I outspeed Archeops here. If I don't, I can just revive again, so it's fine. But yeah, I think it's minus speed nature. Um, okay, yeah, so I did beat the champion. And the timer is going to end after um, the Hall of Fame credits. Not credits, but Hall of Fame like fade to black. Um, yeah, honestly, this, I would say don't run this. Because, um, uh, Marlin, but otherwise it's, it's pretty fun. Also, I'm very sorry for the terrible, um, like, uh, capture card issues. The computer is kind of a potato. So yeah, the timer ends um, in a few seconds here. Yeah, this fake to black and the black screen. Guys, we did it! We finally did it! We unlocked easy mode! Oh no, if you like pain, you can go ahead and go for it. Yeah, GG's. A easy mode baton pass when? It, it's probably going to be the same as normal mode. I won't lie to you. Because challenge mode is bugged. Because it's the levels are the same, and I don't think the IVs change for easy mode. And I also did try um, running um, Manipulus once, just Manipulus easy mode. But yeah, I think it should be the same as just normal mode. So it's not as interesting, I guess. Anyways, GG's.